So when you start losing these games here, even early, against these, compo uh, these opponents you're fighting for, for these very, very key spots, the top three, that can cost a lot. It's true. And then we're going to have to see how the Unicorns of Love feel, though, to have advanced, have moved up one win in the series so far, because Quickshot is standing by with their top laner and their coach. Thank you very much, the Double D Combo, for some amazing calls on the day. I am joined here by Visit Chachi and Sheepy. First of all, congratulations on a fantastic performance. Chachi, you got your hands on Camille. Was that a surprise? Um, it was kind of surprising, but at the same time, not really, because uh, in scrims, uh, we play Shen and Poppy usually into Camille, and it kind of works out fine usually. So I thought that they just give Camille and try to pick out the Shen, but uh, they had different plans in mind. Yeah, different plans. Uh, you guys ended up banning that as well, the second phase. Uh, into Cabo's Fiora, you looked like you had his number. Was that, uh, you know, was it a difficult matchup for you? Um, this matchup is quite easy for Camille in the early game, and... Uh, I was kind of having a lead as well, but I was uh, respecting uh, the Olaf a bit too much, so I just let him come back a bit. And uh, after that, I think it kind of evens out a bit, because Fiora scares very good as well, and probably outscares Camille in 1v1 later on. Uh, so I had to be very careful. Yeah, definitely. Uh, turning our attention to Sheepy. Um, after the 2-0, convincing, dominant win from the boys. You came running over and, you know, really excited. Um, What's it like being a coach backstage watching the team play so well? Uh, first off, I'm really proud because we have been practicing pretty hard for the last two, three weeks, and everybody has been like very strict to the schedule. So when we're going backstage, there's a lot of stuff that we've already practiced in the scrim, so I just need to go to them and say, hey, we played around bot lane, and you know they want to execute something there. So yeah, basically going back there. Um, also for the first game for Samox and Xerxe, um, they didn't really show much nerves there, so it was really easy interacting in the backstage and we just went right into picking bands. Talking about the first game, whose brainchild was giving up Rengar and Melzaha and locking Poppy and Lulu first rotation and, uh, and uh, Ivern as well? I mean, where did that come from? Uh, it just originates from the players. We have been talking about what they are fine and comfortable giving away, so... Uh, Hilly loves playing Lulu into Melzaha, and also if Renga jumps in into Lulu, the ultimate just pops up and it's very hard to follow up afterwards. Uh, so he feels really comfortable, and that was actually something we had prepared before. So, yeah, it was it actually... Was, it was pretty obvious you'd prepared that one, exactly. Sheepy. So, so, so we were really happy when this actually got locked in and Hilly could play the Lulu. Yeah, it definitely seemed the, the guys on stage were very excited. Uh, Chachi, uh, Poppy from game one. The team comp, obviously, you talked about it, you strategized. Um, is that something we can expect more of from the Unicorns of Love, these well-thought-out counters to OP champions? Mm, actually, we can kind of expect that because we have a lot of uh, picks that we can pick into the right now OP champions, and uh, they don't seem that OP. So we can give up some of them and uh, get something in return. Um, but I think in the first game we had like uh, Team Com that was just scaling way better than the enemies. So all we had to do was play a bit safe on lanes and we knew that we were naturally outscale. So it kind of gives a lot of confidence as well if we can get all the picks that we want. And that's what happened game one. Yeah, definitely the case. It was extremely entertaining to watch. Um, I want to stop talking about this series and just step back. Chachi, I'm sure you've had a chance to scrim a lot of teams, you know, throughout the ELCS. In terms of the Group B and the rest of the teams we've seen um, over the last two days, this was one of the most dominating performances. Where is Unicorns of Love power ranking? How much better can you get? Mm, I think we are kind of even with uh, H2K or Splice right now. And uh, I believe we have more potential than them. And uh, I think our roster right now is extremely talented. The two players that we picked up are really good and uh, show a lot of promise in the future as well. So I believe this is maybe one of the most talented rosters that I've uh, had the pleasure to work with. So I'm really looking forward to where we can improve and I believe in the team. Sheepy smiling like a proud dad. This is the last question, Sheepy. How will you keep your unicorns in line and not prevent them going down the chaos style route that we've seen from unicorns of past? Well, if that's the winning style and we go whatever style they want to go for, but I just support the players and uh, play on their strings. So I'm really excited where this is going to end. I don't know either. Um, but so far, I just see the same promise that Chachi is seeing. So I'm so excited for the coming weeks. I think we can improve a lot. Fantastic. It's, uh, thank you again for the interview. Congratulations on the 2-0. We're going to head over to the analyst desk to take away the post-game lobby.